Hi, this is my take on the redesigned Panasonic 14 to 140 mm ultra range zoom lens. I've been a bit surprised by the reaction to this lens by reviewers. A sort of quiet yawn, as if the lens was just a freshening up of an old design. But it isn't. I think reviewers get jaded. A lens arrives for test. Wow, it's a 200mm f1.4. Not seen one of those before. As opposed to, oh, it's a new version of the 14 to 140 zoom I tested a couple of years ago. Oh well. So, apart from the 14 to 140 focal length, what else have Panasonic done for us? Well, at 265 grams, it's not far off half the weight of its predecessor. It has improved anti-shake, and it is smaller in length and diameter. It's a half a stop faster on wide angle, and a bit faster at the long end. Oh yes, and the price is a fraction of the earlier version when introduced. Usefully, it also takes the same 58mm filters as the 12 to 35 and 35 to 100 f2.8 zoom. Design-wise, it's a ringer for the 2 to 8 zooms, so Panasonic seem to be developing a house style here, and a very attractive one too. In use, it feels much like its faster siblings, with silky smooth zoom and manual focus rings, and an air of quality. Essentially, I don't think this lens is an upgrade to the earlier version at all. It's a new lens that happens to have the same focal length as its antecedent. I expected it to feel familiar, a little different, but actually it feels like I've added a new lens to my outfit. If you've seen my review of the F4 earlier version, you'll know that when I looked through my library, I was astonished at how many of the pictures were taken on that lens. Without my knowing it, it had become my catch-all lens. This one will be the same, but I can see it spending even more time on the camera. So how about performance? For sharpness, the main difference between this lens and the old one is that as you zoom out towards the 140mm end with this one, it doesn't lose its sharpness as the old one did. It remains very sharp all the way through the range. Here are some high magnification comparisons between the old, the new and the 35 to 100 f2.8 at 100mm all at around f5.6. They are of no scientific value whatsoever, but what they do say is that even at the long focus end, where quality is at its worst with most zooms, this lens will still produce not just acceptable images, but satisfyingly sharp ones, very similar to the f2.8 zoom in fact. And here is a comparison with the 12-35mm to Panasonic zoom, both lenses at 25mm, and about f4. This is a tougher one because the 12 to 35 is probably the best zoom made for M43. Both give impressive results, but there's not as much between them as you might expect. Distortion, vignetting and purple fringing don't cause any noticeable problems, partly because they're kept at bay in software. And flare is kept away by the neat reversible lens hood, which comes free with the camera, standard, gratis. Can you hear me Olympus? Focusing speed is highly impressive, essentially locking on in the time it takes you to press the shutter button. All the latest lenses from Olympus and Panasonic can do that, but it'd be a shame to lose sight of what an impressive feat it is. I can't sensibly test the in-lens optical stabilisation, but it definitely feels more effective than before, and the calming effect in the viewfinder is very noticeable. Definitely a good lens for the drinkers amongst us. So, we have a lens whose only real downside is a restricted maximum aperture. Even so, at the 14mm end, it is only half a stop slower than its 12-35mm f2.8 stable mate. And at the 140mm end, it is still as fast as most kit zooms are at 42mm. With its relatively small size and weight, just 2.5 ounces, 70 grams more than the 25mm f1.4 Panasonic standard lens, or the Olympus 12-50mm zoom, and balancing nicely in the hand with an Olympus pen or Panasonic GF body, this makes a kit zoom par excellence, and for many photographers could be the only lens they need to buy. There will be two types of buyers for this lens. Photographers already have the older version and are wondering if the swap is worth it, and those who don't and are wondering if the purchase is worth it. For those who don't already have a wide range zoom, this could be the clincher. It is just about small and light enough to think about buying instead of the traditional 14 to 42 or 45 mm kit zoom. You give nothing away in aperture or performance, but it is a lot more expensive. It can replace several lenses though, and so the on cost may be less than it seems in the long run. If you do have the old zoom, should you upgrade? There's nothing here that makes the upgrade essential. The extra speed is nice, but not a game changer. Optical performance is improved, but again, not to a game-changing extent. If the weight and size of your present lens hasn't bothered you up to now, 
I can't see any pressing need for a change. I have bought the new one. Why? Because I regularly sling my pen or GH3 over my shoulder when I go cycling in the city, or walking along a towpath, or in the park, or exploring a new village in France. I'm not going out on a photo expedition, so I don't want to carry a bag. But I don't want to miss pictures I see. The extra reach of this lens just brings that much more into your scope. The old lens, with its weight and size, was a little bit of an encumbrance. This one isn't. The 12-35 to is the other candidate, but I tend to use that when I'm going out with a serious intention of photography and I'm taking my bag and other lenses with me. If the older 14-140 to hadn't existed, the reaction to this lens would have been astonishment. A 28-280mm to mm equivalent f3.5 to f5.6 quality built zoom with image stabilisation weighing 260 grams, 9 ounces. I bought into Micro Four Thirds for the balance between image quality, weight and bulk. This lens is a great example of that balance. It brings the ultra zoom up to date. A point worth making is that if you stop it down to f8, this lens will be as sharp as any other zoom that you can buy for MFT. I said in my test of the old 14 to 140 that it was the lens equivalent of the little black dress that every woman has in her wardrobe. Well, this lens is still the little black dress, but the little black dress is now a bit tighter and a bit shorter. Thanks for watching.